No research, no guidebook, no package deal. Just a drop off in a strange country and two weeks to learn as much as possible. This is globe trotting as you've never seen it before. This is Drop Me Off Here. Georgia, the birthplace of wine, and Stalin, banned from the Eurovision Song Contest, the jewel in the crown of the Caucasus, home to the deepest caves in the world, the earliest human remains discovered, and the beginnings of one of the oldest languages still in use today. It's one of Europe's most beautiful and little-known lands. This is Jason. Guileless voyager in this week's big adventure, armed with a GPS and just two weeks to get to grips with the people, culture and geography of Georgia. Jason has a lot to live up to. Now at an airfield somewhere in Georgia, we join Jason as he awaits his flight and the beginning of his adventure. We got picked up at Tbilisi this morning at some stupid hour. They've dropped us off here, at this airstrip in the middle of nowhere. Um, it looks like we're just waiting for this chopper to uh, depart. Do well, we don't even know where it's going, so just waiting for the weather to clear and then we should be off. Well, so after four hours of waiting, we're finally off. Everyone said their prayers on board. It's my first time on a helicopter and it's pretty bloody exciting. As Jason heads into the heavens of the North Georgian mountains, he gets his first glimpse of his breathtaking adventure playground. From humid rainforests to semi-desert land to eternal snows, he'll have his work cut out navigating this unpredictable land. Svaneti is Georgia's remote northern province. At altitudes that would make your eyes water, the Svan people celebrate death with song, live off the land, and welcome guests with a thigh slap. Well, after we arrived yesterday from our flight from uh, Tbilisi, we arrived in Mestia here. We went into town and uh, we found a cafe slash bar slash uh, brothel. And now they've pointed us up to these ancient watchtowers, which we're about to go have a look at. Whoa. The meeting point of East and West, Georgia made an art of keeping an eye on enemies. The medieval stone towers of Mestia are some of the oldest in the world. This is crazy. We've climbed up maybe five flights of rickety stairs and now we're sitting on the roof of one of the uh, old watchtowers that the, the Vikings used to use um, for archery. I tell you what, we're lucky to make it down. These ladders, uh, well, they're ready to break, so I'm getting the hell out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> With a long trip to the glaciers ahead of him, Jason gets his first taste of Georgian hospitality. We've just been given some fresh fruit from some of the locals there. Looks, mm, looks delicious. Look at oh, that. Plums, man. Look at that.
It's a treacherous five-kilometer hike up to the glaciers of the Greater Caucasus Mountains. Getting there without a guide or a car won't be easy. Two Russian tourists have just driven us about halfway up the trailhead. Um, now we're going to take the rest of it by foot, so it should be another hour, hour and a half, heading straight up the mountain to what should be an awesome glacier. We just passed through some kind of checkpoint back there. I've got my GPS on now, so we shouldn't get lost, but he told us straight up this way and we should be there in another hour, so we should probably keep moving. Military checkpoints in the region have become all the more frequent since the five-day war between Russia broke out back in 2008, and although the situation has drastically improved, tensions are still uneasy to say the least. Got first side of the glacier, and uh, wow, it just looks amazing. I think we should try to get up as high as we can and see if we can see any further in. The Greater Caucasus Mountains are some of Europe's most magnificent, rising some mind boggling 5,000 meters into the air and dotted with glaciers. It's no wonder that the Western region has been named a World Heritage Site. Today, Georgia is completely safe for travelers, and the mountain range's unique reputation as the most undisturbed in Europe seems certain to disappear. I don't know if I want to hang around here too long. The whole thing is melting pretty quickly in his rocks falling off it everywhere, but it's beautiful. With a little help from some friends, Jason has blagged his way to one of the most beautiful sites of Georgia. Yet, as sun-soaked glaciers give way to sprawling rainforest, Jason's luck of the traveller juice is running low. We've left Mestia this morning. We decided to hike over the mountain to Uzguli, which is about 45 kilometers east. Hopefully a jeep or a truck will come past. You know, we can get there a lot quicker. Otherwise, it's going to be about an eight-hour hike. But apparently, it's the highest village in Europe, so it should be quite good. Uh, we've got about an hour into it, and I think we've taken the wrong path. So we've decided that uh, since it's raining, we're just going to stay here for a while till the rain stops or till the car comes and uh, get nice and warm and drink some vodka. It's only, what, two o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, it would be nice to stay here all night, but I think we should keep on soldiering on. So get dry and then uh, move off, yeah. <laughs> That's where we're going to be spending the night and hopefully the rain uh, the rain will stop and we won't get washed out. But yeah, we'll see what happens. left camp this morning. The rain has stopped. Another beautiful day in the Caucasus Mountains. We've definitely taken a wrong turn somewhere. So there's no turning back now. I think we just keep moving up the hill. We're starting to get pretty hungry and we've run out of water. So hopefully we find a village soon. <laughs> Mm. 
villages are few and far between in the Greater Caucasus Mountains, and as our intrepid explorer soon discovers, it is easy to lose your way amongst the wild of the Georgian landscape. It's taken us 24 hours to realise that we've gone the wrong direction. We've just met one of the guides up there that told us uh, we need to head back towards Mestia and take the other road, so thank God it's a downhill walk, but uh, yeah, it's like 24 hours walking uphill, so. <laughs> Uh, we've come back down to the main road and we're finally on our way to, well, not all the way to where's Gooley, but it's going to save us walking a few kilometres. So, I think we'll get to the next town and, <laughs> God, I'm starving. We'll get something to eat and then hopefully find another ride and we should be there by this afternoon. The highest village in Europe, so it should be quite cool. Luckily for Jason, hitchhiking in Georgia is, well, as safe as jumping in a car with a stranger can be. We've been invited into this family's house and we've been eating uh, cheese, bread, vegetables, uh, and of course vodka. So they tell us about another uh, 12, 12 kilometers over a mountain. But I tell you what, I'm feeling a bit pissed at the moment, so I don't. Hopefully, we can get another ride. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is George, Georgian hospitality at its best. It's brilliant. For the bon viveurs of the former Soviet states, a simple bottoms up won't suffice. Here, toast making is a kind of boozy art form performed by the tamada or head of table. They last almost as long as the feast itself. Fortified by his host's stirring words and a hefty dose of vodka, Jason is ready to hit the road again. Thank you very much. Thank We're on the main road from Mestia to Vizguli. Uh, There's just no traffic. There's no traffic on this road to take us. I want to get over this ridge and then I think we'll, we'll spend another night camping. Oh, I've, ne I've never walked this far in my life. This is insane. There's a car coming up the mountain now. Jason is back on the road with a friendly Georgian couple and Yushkuli, the highest village in Europe, is now but a death-defying car ride away. Some 2,000 plus meters above sea level, Yushguli is covered in snow for six months of the year. Visitors to this isolated community are welcomed like old friends. If Yushguli were anywhere else in the world, it might be a tourist touting theme park by now. Yet casually scattered with 12th century buildings, it's still an area of undisturbed beauty and it's not exactly easy access. Accommodation comes in the form of the locals' open doors. There's no tour desk and no minibar, but there is the promise of a hearty meal and good company. morning they've given us a couple of horses apparently there's a glacier over this way I haven't ridden a horse since I was maybe seven years old and if I can get this thing to move we uh, we should be there today gay 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 no no all right, boy. Go, go, go. On horseback, go, Jason go, go. could arrive at the glacier in a couple of hours. But his trusty steed has other ideas. I'm 
suffering from a bit of uh, chafage. So I think we've got to take a bit of a bit of a break. Tell you what, look at that. It's just beautiful. A mecca for hikers and nature junkies the world over, the mountains of Upper Svaneti are well worth the chaffage. It's taken us six hours to go, maybe 10 kilometers up to our second glacier in as many days. And even when we think we're in Alaska, but we're still high up in the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia. Gracefulest ballerina. <laughs> We had to leave the horses down by the river because it's, it's just it's just too hard for them to get up the mountain there. Now we ride back to uh, Zguli, return the horses, and have a look around the town. It's been a long day on the back of a horse. We're back in Zguli. It started to rain, so we can have a nice warm shower, a cup of chai, and uh, yeah, a good night's sleep. As with much of the Svaneti region, Yushguli is rich in cultural history. Its chapel and stone towers like Mestia make the place feel like it's trapped in time. We've got a bit of time to kill before we leave today, so we've been told there's some ancient watchtowers up on the very top of this mountain, so we're going to go up and check them out. But it looks like a bit of a hike up there. I feel like I've been run over by a steamroller after yesterday's horse ride. Oh. Oh. Alright, oh. get up there. Oh, f oh, f oh. <laughs> Today we bid farewell to Vizguli and the mountain region of Svaneti. We've spent about a week here up in the mountains after our chopper flight from uh, Tbilisi. We've managed to get a ride this afternoon uh, from Vizguli to the other side of the mountain range which is going to save us about a two or three day hike. From now we will start heading down the mountains into the lowlands of Georgia so it should be getting a bit warmer uh, and some more predictable weather. It's over a week since Jason has been off the beaten track of Georgia and the simple life is beginning to take its toll. Uh, tell you what, I've had enough of this mud and shit everywhere. So, it'd be nice to go back to some kind of civilization. I'm dying for a Mars bar or a Coca-Cola or, you know, we're, we're running out of money. There's, there's, no, there's no banks, there's no shops in the, in the mountain region here. So, it'd be nice to go back and uh, yeah, get, get some luxuries, get some luxuries, it should be nice. The hungry passerby is unheard of in Georgia and Jason is welcomed into a magnificent supra, a table ritual as old as the Georgian people themselves. Accompanied by large amounts of wine and often a bit of toe tapping, there's not a Soviet style spam can in sight. 
It's time for Jason to bid the mountains goodbye and head to Georgia's second largest city, Katesi. The home of the Golden Fleece quested for in Greek mythology and the first nation in the region to accept Christianity, it's what they call a cultural and spiritual hub. Will Jason find his own Golden Fleece in this enchanting city, or at least the warm welcome he has been accustomed to? Today we've just decided to relax in the town. We've gone out to get some lunch and we've met these guys at a local cafe and they've driven us up to this monastery in the hills. The holy, oh, holy water, oh, it's bloody cold. <laughs> Built in the 11th century, Bagrati Cathedral is the Eiffel Tower of Katesi. Named after Bagrat III, the first king of United Georgia, it is hailed as a masterpiece of medieval Georgian architecture, with more mosaics and wall paintings than you can shake a stick at. Georgians are proud to have cultivated the first grape juice 8,000 years ago. And everyone, even the priests, enjoy this rich heritage with gusto. It's just gone what, past 12 o'clock. I've had half a bottle of vodka. We've had about half a bottle of uh, vino from the priests here. Uh, beer, everything. It's. Uh, it's just amazing. The guys that invited us up here, it happens that his uh, grandfather is a taxi driver, so we're getting a free free ride back to uh, back to town. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to go out and party tonight. <laughs> and what better place to use party as a verb than a place where refusing a drink is an insult? For the people. For the people. For the people. We've had to get a taxi out to this monastery that everyone's been telling us to come visit. It's meant to be a very holy place in Georgia. We decided to come out here for the day, so we're gonna go have a look. Ancient mysteries seem to cling to this honeycomb of caves hacked out of a towering mountain. Yet in fact the caves are an ancient monastery, the brilliant baffling design of the first queen of Georgia. A hiding place from the exhaustive attack of the Mongols at the end of the 12th century. Unlike most tourist spots, visitors are allowed to roam around freely. Yet monks live here to date, so popping your head into one of their homes is a definite no-no. It's just a couple of days before Jason's adventure ends, and there's just time for one last hitch. It's not surprising that the hand of God would be felt in the postcard pretty region of South Georgia. Perched on the desert slopes of Mount Garija and boasting authentic cave-dwelling monks, the David Garija Monastery includes hundreds of cells, churches, chapels, refectories and living quarters.
Among his residents have been many important Georgian religious figures. And today it's a place of reflection for travelers and locals alike. Founded in the 6th century by St. David Garageli, the monastery was a favorite of the Georgian royals and nobility. Despite its precarious location, the monastery remained an important center of religious and cultural activity for many centuries. The high artistic skill of the medieval frescoes alone make it an indispensable part of world treasure. I think we're starting to get pretty tired after two weeks of non-stop non-stop travel, so tomorrow we return to Tbilisi, it's our last day, spend a day there and then back to Europe, ready for the weekend again. <laughs> it's the end of Jason's adventure in Georgia. He may not have a novelty shot glass or sunbed suntan, but he survived on the kindness of strangers and manly intuition alone. How will our next great adventurer stack up? Here we are at the end of our trip in Georgia. We've only spent two weeks here. We've managed to see a whole lot of the country. We started off in the mountain region of Svaneti. We moved down to the Black Sea coast and then all the way to the east side to the border with Azerbaijan. I think the most amazing thing for me has been the people. The hospitality, uh, the friendliness, the open-heartedness has just, uh, just blown us away. When we arrived in Georgia, we didn't know anything about the country. But our whole trip here has been very spontaneous and very unplanned. You know, it just goes to show that without any meticulous pre-planning or research, you can still have a pretty amazing trip. From sunny Georgia, nach Fombis, uh, see you later.